Good morning. Welcome to worship. Those of you who are gathered with us here in this space and those who are gathered with us online, we are glad you're here with us on this Sunday, July 18th, 2021. I'd like to invite you to join me in praying our call to worship together. Break down the barriers that divide us, O oh Lord. Melt the barbed wire of anger and hatred. For we are called to newness in Christ Jesus. Come, let us worship the God who removes obstacles from our paths. Amen. I invite you to continue to be in prayer with me as we pray our opening prayer together in unison. Creator God, just as you, our God, our one, Jesus prayed that your church might also be one. May you renew our minds and rekindle your love in our hearts so that by the power of the Spirit, we might find oneness with each other and oneness with you. God, may we see in you our need for unity, our need for community, and our need for diversity. God, in all things, may we experience and share your love for us and for one another. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is from the faith we sing, number 2175, Together We Serve. We're training some new tech people, and she's doing a great job, but she's very nervous. So we're giving some grace today for sure, always, because as I have said to everyone who I've trained, I never did it perfect one Sunday. Jason never did it perfect one Sunday. So we don't have to be perfect. We just do our best. 
And whatever comes out will be our best, and that's, and that's all that matters. Because we're connecting in ways that we can and doing the best we can. But it is time for our children's message. And I have some special props with me today. I had my kids dig around. I don't know if anybody has any of these in their house. Legos of varying colors. Oh, and we even have some trees. And I have some windows. So I'm going to build something, or I might pass this off to my kids, and maybe they can build during church, and then I can show you what they build afterwards. Either way is fine. We'll see how it goes. But one of the things that I love about Legos is there's different sizes, as I said, different shapes. This one's like a bridge, kind of. We've got smaller ones skinny ones, fatter ones, longer ones, rainbow colored ones. And we also have the platform that you build on so that then you can carry it places instead of trying to juggle the building that might not be totally structurally sound. Close, but maybe not perfect. But there's all different shapes and sizes that you can bring and all of them together are what make that structure stand. And just like all of those pieces together make that structure stand, all of us together make this church stand, the global church and this own, our little church. And in our scripture, we'll hear about the cornerstone, that Jesus is the cornerstone, the thing that holds it. So maybe this isn't quite a cornerstone, but this could be maybe a symbol of the cornerstone, the key that keeps it structurally stable, the ground And so when we think about Jesus being our cornerstone and all those different shapes and sizes, because I look around here and nobody looks exactly the same, even two people who are supposed to be identical still don't look exactly the same, there's things that we all have that are unique to us, but together, we work together to make that structure stand. We work together with our families, with our neighbors, to help our structure be strong. So I'm going to give these Legos to my kids and see what they come up with during church. And at the end, we'll, we'll share what it is. No pressure. Okay, you got this. They're professional Lego builders, so I'm not super concerned. Please pray with me. Loving God, thank you so much for putting Jesus in our lives for giving us the strength and the cornerstone to be strong in your name, to build that house together. Help us to work together to build a strong family, a strong church for today, tomorrow, and years to come. Amen. And our scripture this morning comes from Psalm 24 and Ephesians 2. And our liturgist today is Nicole. So if you want to come to that microphone, you'll have to turn it on and make sure it's right in front of your face. Those are the two rules. Testing. Oh, can you hear me? Is that working? Okay. Um, Our first scripture reading is Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from their God, their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is he, this king of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Our second scripture reading is Ephesians 2, 14 through 22. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one 
new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we have both access to the Father by one Holy Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you are too being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Thank you. Blessings this morning to the beloved people of God. Over the past few weeks, we have been looking at the importance of tending to our personal renewal, tending to our souls, and opening ourselves up to what it means to be made a new creation through Christ. This morning, we'll explore the vision of this new creation, the vision of the world where we are no longer strangers, no longer outsiders, because of our differences, a vision of the world that God has envisioned for us all. Whether you've been a Christian your whole life or you're new or you're still figuring it out, there is room in God's house for everyone. Jesus, as I said in the children's message, is the cornerstone of the house, the one who anchors it, gives it strength, makes it so the structure can be whole and complete. This morning, let us look at what, how we are being called to the building of this house to the building of this new creation, together. Please pray with me. God of grace and God of love, you lift us up. You lead us into your presence. We are so grateful and are reminded each and every day of the many ways of your mercy and your love. We get distracted, God. We go on different paths, but you call us back every time. May we be reminded of your loving presence with us, your encouragement and the strength that you give to us. May we find comfort and that strength in you. Amen. Throughout scripture, there are countless reminders of how God is there to support and encourage us throughout our lives, how God is always there when we need God the very most. And Psalm 24 is one of those times, one of those places. It reminds us of who God is in our lives and who God is in the lives of all people all over the world. In this Psalm, we are reminded first and foremost that God is creator, the one who brought all things into being. It's a reminder to seek God, to go to God in those times, in those tough times and those circumstances that overwhelm us. This psalm also calls for us to follow God's leading, to follow what is of God, not what is of the people. This is to say that when this is not to say that when we follow God's leading and we put our trust in God, that life will be easy, everything will go as we want it to go. Nothing will go wrong, because that's not true. But when we have God by our side, it makes it possible to face those challenges, those things that might distract us otherwise, those things that might freak us out or overwhelm us. For me, when I start to feel overwhelmed, it's best to take a step back, to sit in prayer and conversation with God, Now, even though I know that this is the best thing for me to do, it's not always the easiest thing to do. Can anybody relate to that? We all know we need to take quiet time, but is it always easy to do it? No. We get busy. We think, oh, we'll do that later. And then later is like two months later because you never took the time. But when I take that time, 
I can be able to see beyond the muck that's weighing me down, the things that are making me feel stuck. And the other thing that helps in those times is to surround myself with people who will be honest with me, who will say it like it is, even when it's not the easiest thing to say or to hear, who know you know have your back and who will hold you accountable and make you rest. Those are good friends to have around. One of my favorite television series is not on right now. It's called Madam Secretary. And in the show, it chronicles the life and the work of the Secretary of State, whose name is Elizabeth McCord. And in one of the episodes, President Conrad Dalton was exhibiting atypical behavior. His mannerisms were just off. He wasn't like he normally was. He wasn't focused. He was speaking harshly to others, making irrational and rash decisions, nothing you want your president to be doing, both of which almost brought them into a war. His close advisors knew him so well and knew that something was not right. They got to a point where they had to force him to get a medical exam, at which point it was determined that he had a benign tumor that was pushing up against his brain, causing him to act unlike his normal self. President Dalton in this show thankfully surrounded himself with people who knew him well and were people who would not step down when they noticed that something just wasn't right. They saved his life and likely the lives of many others. Now I know this is a fictional story, this didn't really happen, but it brings to mind the importance of surrounding yourself with people that you can trust. Surrounding yourself with people who will hold you accountable Surrounding yourself with people who have your safety, your well-being at heart. Surrounding your people, yourself with people who care for you and want what's best for your life. When life presents itself with ever-changing variables and when the world seems so full of chaos, it is a blessing to know that we serve a God who is constant in goodness, abundant in grace, and full of mercy. In all things and at all times, God is there, blessing us, supporting us. And it is a true blessing to be surrounded by people who are also doing that for you. The opening lines of Paul's letter to the Ephesians offer a pronunciation pronouncement, let me get that word out, pronouncement of a blessing upon God in response to the many ways that God has blessed the people. In his letter, the Apostle Paul is first calling for the offering of gratitude to God. And in what we read read today, he's calling for unity. Unity amongst all the people that maybe they didn't have a lot of unity before. He's calling for them to come together. It's a simple message. It celebrates that unity amidst diversity is the heartbeat of the gospel of Jesus. The gospel, the good news, is strong enough to bring nations together, ethnic groups, tribes, races, male, female, human relationships, all of it together to a stronger, more united community that share a belief in God, a faith in Jesus, and a unity that's connected through the Holy Spirit. This message of unity amongst diversity is as urgent today as it was over 2,000 years ago. It's vitally important for the church of today to seek to be united focused on the tasks of social justice, of reaching out to the community, of sharing the good news of Jesus, the creation of a new humanity through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus made it possible for Jews and Gentiles to live together, to be in relationship, in peace, and reconciliation. The global church nations, ethnic groups, political and religious leaders of today would benefit from hearing this message from Ephesians. This call for unity and peace 
should be on the agenda and mission of all people. In our 21st century worldview, we're experiencing the construction of walls of hostility, barriers of exclusion, and those lead to the opposite of unity, the opposite of peace, the opposite of reconciliation. Immigrants and outsiders from all over the world are experiencing rejection. But we as humans, we as Christians, we as people sharing this earth together can and must do and be better. Rather than focusing on that which separates us, we'd better off be better off looking at those things that bring us together, those things that connect us across the miles. The call of Ephesians 2 is basically a summoning of all people to come together, for all people to join together and be unified. In the face of racial, ethnic, and social tensions, the followers of Jesus are called to model hospitality. We are called to bring love to places where hatred has become the norm. As followers of Jesus, the task of the church is to break down those walls, break down those barriers that separate humanity, and build up a church that loves and welcomes all people. The call of God on all of us can be summed up in that one word, love. Love transcends everything, everything. Love leads to a place of peace. It allows for us to see the world with new, wider, more open eyes. Love helps us see and celebrate the diversity around the world. Love reminds us that we are connected to one another, those who have gone before us, those who have not yet come, and those who are here right now. Christ's vision for the church is still has a pulse, still has a heartbeat. It's still rooted in that love. It's about being transformed in our minds. It's about not othering our neighbors. It's about sharing the peace of Christ here on earth. We're all a work in progress. As John Wesley said, on the way to perfection. Will we ever get there? Not sure, but we'll keep trying. We are all doing our best, and we're all called to come together, because when we come together, our best gets better. So this week, I encourage you to take some time to reflect on how you are called to break down walls, to break down barriers in your families, neighborhood, community, or throughout the world. I'm going to give you a few ideas to get the wheels turning in your brain. One thing you could do, just walk around your neighborhood. Talk to people. Talk to people who are out in their yards. Talk to people in the stores that you shop at, the restaurants you eat at. Talk to people because barriers come down when we talk to people. Befriend someone who is different than you, culturally, socially, ethnically, whatever. This person might live in your neighborhood or work with you or be a parent at your child's school, but be intentional about cultivating friendships with people who are different than you. Pick a country that's different from your familial origin. Research that country. Learn about their culture. Learn about their food. That's my favorite part. And then cook something that, about, that is ethnically part of that country. Learn about them and ask yourself, do you have a greater understanding of what makes them who they are as well as what unites us or you with that culture? Invite someone to do something. That's a really broad one. Invite them for dinner. Go to coffee. Go for a walk. Or just simply call them on a fo the phone and have a conversation. When we invite someone to do something with us, 
We create a culture of belonging and connection, which breaks down those barriers. Breaking down barriers and building up a new creation through relationship building can push us out of our comfort zone, which can be scary. But the reward for yourself, for the other person, and even for the greater community is so worth the risk. So may we all find ways to step out of our comfort zone this week, find a way to break barriers and share the love of Christ with our friends, our neighbors, and with strangers. Let us join in unity to be God's church here on earth, rooted and strengthened by peace, and most importantly, by love. Amen. We'll now have a time of silent prayer and meditation. I invite you to be in prayer, and we will close that time with the Lord's Prayer. Please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn today comes from the worship and song book, number 3122, Christ Has Broken Down the Wall. Okay.
We thank you for worshiping with us, and we thank you for the many ways that you support the mission and ministry of Niowa United Methodist Church through your prayers, your presence, your gift, your service, your witness, and all the ways that you help us to reach beyond the walls of this church. We thank you for that support today and every day. I don't know where it went there. We, <laughs> we go from this place. We'll wait just a second and let Barb figure it out. <laughs> You're doing great. Doing great. Doing great. It's all good. Did you lose the camera? Okay, I'll just keep going. I'll just talk. It's okay. Nobody needs to see me on there anyways. The call for all of us today and every day is to go out into the world, to be the hands and feet of Christ in all that we do. May we go out, step out of our comfort zones, try something, and break down a barrier that might be in our way. Go in peace and joy and light and love. Amen.